Understanding schematics, this video supplements module 15 um, troubleshooting basic air conditioning controls. So what we're going to take a look at here is a contactor and uh, that is used to start the condenser fan and the compressor. Now contactors and relays on schematic diagrams are look quite different than they do in when you're looking at those devices themselves and and they're somewhat difficult to understand so we're going to start with contactors and schematic diagrams and get over the highest hurdle first and then everything else will fall into place and become much much simpler so if you can get the contactor and relays uh, you'll have most of it licked the other thing is is to understand schematic diagrams so we're going to look at a Linux system today later on we'll look at some other manufacturers systems and their schematic diagrams because um, schematic diagrams are quite different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Okay, so how do you make sense of all of this and when you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on and where do you start? So that's what we're going to take a look at. So on the inside cover of the condenser um, electrical area is a schematic diagram similar to this. This is the Linux system. Now the way that you make sense of all of this over here is by reading and understanding these schematics. These are roadmaps and they tell you where to go and where things are and how things are interconnected electrically. And you can tell these are quite different than what you see in the book or any other type of test or training that you get. The schematic diagrams here are quite quite different. So let's take a look. This is the contactor right down here. We're going to take a look at how it's represented on the schematic diagram and 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 see what happens. All right, so we zoomed in just a little bit. Here's our contactor, and then here is the schematic diagram that represents the wiring that we looked at earlier. So we're going to take a look at how this is all broken down. So as you can see, this contactor right here is one complete device with wires coming in, wires going out, wires activating the contactor itself, all in one complete piece. If you look over here at the schematic diagram, you can see that K1, which is the represents the contactor, we'll talk about legends here in just a little bit, and then K11 represents the contactor and then there's also another compressor contactor represented here on the schematic diagram so where we have one complete device over here it's represented in three different places over here on the schematic diagram so that's where the confu confusion comes in all right, first schematic symbol that we're going to look at. Uh, Lennox uses this schematic symbol right here, this little zigzag. That is the coil of the contactor, and that is what is used to activate the contactor. And we have connection A and connection B. And you can see they don't have the uh, colors of the wires coming out here from Y1 out and common, but with a contactor, the wires that activate the coil and activate the contactor are always on these little spade connectors on the side here, especially when you're in a residential system. So right here, this connection here and this connection here is represented by this schematic symbol right here. So that zigzag that you look, see down here represents the coil of the contactor. In another video, we will take a look at uh, what a contactor looks like in detail. Okay, so what about K11 compressor contactor? You can see that this shows a break in the electrical path right here. And that is represented by the that's representation of this contact that gets pulled in when the actuator is 
provided with voltage. And then we have compressor contactor down here and as you can see that's just a straight electrical connection that's represented by this little bus bar right here this is always you can't see it right back there behind but it goes all the way up through and makes complete contact so that is how the contactor is rep this part of the contactor is represented so one of the things that you need to remember about a schematic diagram and especially with contactors and relays that this representation right here is a contact that is normally open and when you look at a schematic diagram the manufacturers have have the schematic diagram representing the system with power applied but the system not operational so it's just sitting there waiting to turn on so as this system sits right now and you look at the schematic diagram this electrical connection is open and that would mean this part of the contactor is out and not making contact across that those contacts right there and there all of our contactors on residential systems are 24 volt actuated contactors so when you see this common and Y1 out this is a 24 volts once it's applied to the coil it's going to pull that contactor in and it's going to provide power to the system so once again schematic diagrams and contactors and relays as well they're represented in on the schematic diagram it's three different type they look like three different devices when in actuality it's just one we'll go over this again we'll go over how th when this contactor is actuated the path the current follows to and voltage follows to turn on the compressor and to turn on the condenser fan and we'll, we'll complete the schematic diagram lesson on our next video Okay, that's it. Next video, we'll talk about how that contactor works and operates the compressor and condenser fan. If there's any questions, uh, let me know in the module forum or send me a private message on our um, online classroom.